Pangasinan to Teachers of MAPE. Welcome to this series of Division Online Training on the Reproduction of Second Quarter Instructional Videos in Music, Arts, Physical Education, and Health. But before the commencement of our training proper, we will begin from giving honor and glory to our Creator, followed by paying respect to our country with an audiovisual presentation.
Bayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Bayang maginip, kaya sa sinahanan, alam ng puso sa hindi ko'y buhay. Upang hinihang, tuyang ka ng magiting, sa manlulupin, di ka pasisigil sa gagatang tutok sa simoy at sa langit mo. The new realities stemming from the COVID-19 crisis underscore the importance of continual learning supported by investments in the remote, on-demand digital tools for the modern workforce. Digital learning is any type of learning used as technology. It can happen across all curriculum areas. Online learning is now applicable just to learn academics, but it also extends learning extracurricular activities for students as well. And now, to give us her welcome address, may we call on Dr. Lilibeth A. Daos, Education Program Supervisor in MAPE. One. Good day to everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Division Online Training Workshop on the reproduction of second quarter instructional videos in MAPE, grades 1 to 10. Join me in giving thanks to our school's Division Superintendent, Dr. Danilo C. Season, our two assistant schools division superintendent, Dr. Arlene Casipit and Dr. Wilfredo Sindayan. Our two chiefs from the CID, Dr. Cornelio Araquino, and from SUOB, Dr. Rosalino T. Agpalo Jr. Thank you also for all the school heads from both elementary and secondary, to the district supervisors, and to the department heads of MAPE. Special thanks and congratulations in advance to all the participants, trainers, resource speakers, and technical working group of this training. The objectives of this four-day training are to understand the purposes and objectives of video lesson, to know the guidelines on the creation of video lesson, the technical structure of video lesson, to understand the copyright infringement, and to learn the different applications for video editing. At the end of this training, our participants are expected to produce quality outputs to be used by our students and teachers in the blended learning. Once again, enjoy your day, make use of this training, let's make ourselves productive, and let's keep in our minds that learning should be together and should be continuous even when we are apart. At this time, here is the training matrix for our four-day online training workshop on the reproduction of second quarter instructional video lessons in MAPE from grades 1 to 10. We are so happy and elated to see you teachers as participants in this training and workshop. And we hope that after this training, all of us are equipped and ready to venture on the next modality in our present status in our school system. Starting on November 8th from 7.30 to 8 a.m., we are to log in via Google Meet. From 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., we will have the opening program, starting with a prayer, Pambansang Awit, and Pangasinin Him, all through an audiovisual presentation. Subsequently, Dr. Lilibeth A. Daos will give her opening remarks and an orientation by yours truly. And from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30, we will have the training workshop proper. First, the video lesson, its purpose and objectives, to be delivered by Sir Christian J.C. Kawile. Next is the guidelines in the video lessons by Sir Mark Joseph B. Veloria, followed by the technical structure of video lesson to be delivered by Ma'am Josefa P. Sulumon. 
and the copyright issues to be given by Sir Roger Z. Estabilio. From 9.30 a.m. to 12 and from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., we have a simultaneous training. The speakers and trainers will alternate among the different groups to present their topics. From Group A, PowerPoint, Group B, CopCut application or the mobile app, and Group C for computer software. For Group A, the speakers will be Sir James C. Engson. We also have an open forum from where the participants from Group A will be Grades 1, 2, and 7. For Group B, we have the CopCut application or for the mobile app, we have our speaker, Mr. Raymond Aquino, to be followed by an open forum. And from Group B, the participants shall be Grades 3, 4, and 8. Moving on to the Group C, the Computer Software Group, the speaker will be Mr. Frankie Maluk, once again followed by an open forum, and the participants will be from grades 5, 6, 9, and 10. After which, from 3 to 3.30, we shall have the question and answer forum and to be followed by the closing program. For November 9, the activity shall start from 7.30 to 8 a.m. Still, we will log in via Google Meet. From 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., we'll have the online presentation of outputs by grades 1 to 6, MAPE Video Developers. And from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., we'll have the online presentation of outputs by grades 7 to 10, MAPE Video Developers. And there you have it, our four-day activity orientation and matrix for our training workshop. So let us all listen and learn. To present to us the purpose and objective of video lesson is a senior high school teacher too of San Jacinto National High School, a choreographer, winning coach of folk dancing, second placer in congressional, and fourth placer in division singing contest. He earned his bachelor's degree in education, major in MAPE at Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, South La Union Campus. Teachers, our first speaker is Sir Christian J. C. Kawile. Good morning, dear MAPI teachers of Pangasinan II. I am honored and privileged to be with you virtually to deliver a brief presentation about the purposes and objectives of video lesson. By the way, I am Christian J. Colliado Kawili of San Jacinto National High School, your resource speaker for this topic. At this moment, I am going to discuss the purposes and objectives of video lesson. This pandemic changed a lot of things. The norms that we usually do is now limited. And the worst thing is, the restriction in many norms that we are doing in the normal situation before the pandemic strikes are changed. And one of this is the educational system that we have. From face-to-face -face classes to blended learning modality is a big gap for every teacher to teach their students. And one of the best innovations that we can have is to create a video lesson. As we all know, video lessons are widely used by the Department of Education nowadays. Video lessons facilitate remote learning opportunities so that teachers can reach students from their homes. Hopefully, this presentation will enlighten and deepen the knowledge of each one of you about the purposes and objectives of video lessons. The overall structure of my lesson are composed of three main points. First, we will define what is video lesson. Second, we will identify the purposes of using a video lesson. And lastly, we will identify the objectives of using a video lesson. Now, let us tackle the first main point. Our first main point is to define video lesson. So what is video lesson? A video lesson is a video which presents educational material for a topic which is to be learned. The format of video lesson may vary. It might be a video of a teacher speaking to the camera, photographs, and text about the topic or some mixture of this. 
and our video lesson that we will be done under MAPE has its own structure that will be discussed also later. Now, let us identify the purposes of using video lesson. The following are purposes of using video lesson for the students. First, using video in delivering the lesson is memorable and comprehensive. Video-based learning easily attracts any student. A combination of speech, text, and images makes it easier to get to the point much faster. This makes room for more content and extra conversation, all in less time. Second, video lessons are accessible. The beauty of video lesson is its accessibility. Learners may access the videos when and how they want to. Moreover, learners can watch and rewatch the video lesson as many times as needed to grasp a topic. And the third one, using video lessons promotes engagement. Video lessons makes learners connect faster to the lesson. Effective video lessons significantly improve the memory process by facilitating thinking in the manner of asking questions. Asking questions leads to better research skills, collaboration, organizational skills, and problem solving. These are the top skills we all wanted to perfect for our learners. Learning through video sparks curiosity and promotes the development of critical thinking. The following are also purposes of video lesson for teachers. First, video lessons are teaching tools. Video lessons has been an important teaching tool for enhancing learning. Today, we are at the forefront of an even greater reliance on video lessons because of distance learning. Both teachers and learners are creatively leveraging video for learning. Second, video lessons build background knowledge on a topic or lesson. We know that learners learn best when they take in information via multiple modalities through reading, drawing, listening to the teacher's oral explanations, and viewing visual media. Images and videos included in the video lessons support the learning of new content, concepts, and ideas. And the third one, video lessons may promote positive student-teacher relationship. Positive student-teacher relationships help students learn especially during times of stress or trauma. If you're teaching students at a distance, it may seem harder to form those relationships. Video lessons give learners another option for connecting with you on their own time. Learners can use video lessons to connect with each other as well as their parents. And our third main point is the objectives of using video lessons. I have identified three major objectives of using video lessons. First is to empower and give the parents full confidence in assisting their children. We as teachers are also aware ever since the pandemic has begun that parents are also experiencing some difficulties in guiding their children in answering their modules because of a lot of reasons or problems. Video lessons may aid confusion and help them gain confidence in assisting their children. Second is to help learners to fully understand the lessons in the module. I think and I know that as teachers, this is our main goal and our main concern. And the last objective in using video lesson is to help teachers in explaining the lesson in the module. Ever since the pandemic has begun, teachers find it difficult to reach learners, especially when they did not fully understood their lessons in their modules or find difficulty in answering some activities. 
video lessons may be of a great help for teachers in solving this problem. When we say video lesson, the first enters our mind is brief explanation on a particular topic in a short time. We know that when we say teaching, the teacher himself will explain the lesson so that the child can better understand what we are teaching, which we cannot do now because we don't have the face-to-face -face classes. And because of this video lesson, we will be able to make our work easier as a teacher and the child's learning will also be easier for him because he sees someone teaching him virtually. Do you remember that feeling of excitement when you got to watch a video for a class as a young student? Video content ranged from watching some video clips on Philippine history, a fun exercise video that you can imitate, or the science behind atoms and chemical elements. No matter the topic, you love the opportunity to watch any video content. Now we, teachers, will make one of those video lessons. Can you imagine how would our students feel when they will watch their teachers in those video lessons? You can make a meaningful difference, dear teacher. And with that, I am leaving you with this quotation. We teachers are resilient. We can learn to thrive in our new normal if we have the mindset and the resources we need to adapt. You can do it, mom and sir. And that ends my topic. Again, I am Christian J. Culliado Kawili of San Jacinto National High School. Thank you for listening. Our second speaker is a senior high school teacher too from San Jacinto National High School. A graduate of Bachelor of Science in Information and Communication Technology of Pangasinan State University in Lingayen. And Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education, major in Social Science at Pinsat Colleges, Dagupan. He is a senior high school ICT coordinator, a performing arts coordinator in music, and immersion teacher. He is a winning coach in Likhawitan, Violin Solo, Robotics, and Division Jingle Contest. He teaches Java and Net Technology Programming with National Certificate 3 and Media Information Literacy. To present to us the guidelines in video lessons, let us all welcome our next speaker, Mr. Mark Joseph B. Veloria. Hello video developers and welcome to the Vision Online Training Workshop on the reproduction of second quarter instructional video lessons in MAPE grades 1 to 10. I am Mark Joseph B. Viloria of San Jacinto National High School. Printed module as alternative learning modality has been successful in the past school years since the pandemic hit us. Department of Education said that the blended learning approach, a combination of one or two alternative learning modalities, will be used in the delivery of basic education. Now, regardless of the subject matter we are presently in, we are here today to learn how to make a video lesson for it is one of the features of the blended learning. Join me as I discuss to you the guidelines of the creation of video lessons. So just sit back, watch, and listen to what I have prepared for you. Before you start working on the video lessons production, you'll need to figure out what resources and equipment you'll need. For video editing, you'll need an electronic device such as laptop, computer, smartphones, tablets, or other device. To determine the electronic device you will use for video editing, you must first determine which video editing software or mobile apps you will use as they both require software programs and hardware equipment to function effectively. So, check the system requirements of the video editing software or mobile apps to ensure that they are compatible with the device you're planning to use. 
what software or mobile apps will be used for video editing and their system requirements. The Technical Working Group of MAPE Division of Pangasinan 2 introduces and recommends the following video editors for your video lesson, but not limited to Filmora X, CapCut, and Microsoft PowerPoint. Filmora X It is a user-friendly video editor developed by Wondershare. This software is compatible with laptops and computers. Let us check if your device matches the system requirements of Filmora X. The Filmora X is available for both Windows and Mac computers and laptops. The system requirements of the Mac version are Mac OS version 10.12 or above, an Intel i5 or higher version of Intel processor, a RAM of 16GB For the graphics, Intel HD Graphics 5000 or later AMD Radeon R5 or later with 4GB video RAM and a 10GB free disk space The Windows version requires 64-bit Windows 10, Windows 8.1, or Windows 7 operating system the requirements for hardware are the same as with the Mac version. Later, Sir Frankie Maluk will give you a tour in using Filmora X. CapCut is a free all-in-one video editing mobile app that helps you create incredible videos using your smartphones, tablets, other handheld devices at your own fingertips. CapCut is available for both Android and iOS operating system. Sir Raymond G. Aquino will give you more details on how to use this app. Microsoft PowerPoint is one of the components of Microsoft Office. With PowerPoint, you can create clean slideshow presentations. One of its best features that you can use perfectly for your video lesson is the narration and slide timings which enhances web-based or self-running slideshow. This feature is available in PowerPoint for Microsoft 365, PowerPoint 2021, PowerPoint 2019, PowerPoint 2016, PowerPoint 2013, and PowerPoint 2010 for both Windows and Mac computers and laptops. If you have a microphone and speakers and a webcam, you can record your PowerPoint presentation and capture narrations and slide timings. After you have made the recording, your presentation can be saved as a video file. Sir James C. Engson will be the one who will guide you in utilizing Microsoft PowerPoint. Lighting is important in video production because cameras do not respond to lights in the same way that a human eye does. Use ring lights or other lights available in your house or school. You may apply one of the light setups for video or filmmaking. One light setup using a ring light, two-point lighting setup, and a three-point lighting setup. Try these setups and choose which one works best for your video. Take your sound more seriously with one of the audio recorders for video and filmmaking such as lapels. All you need to do is to plug in the lapel to your phone or to your DSLR camera. Lapel would be the best option when doing the voiceovers. If you can afford this, you may use your phone's built-in microphone as an alternative to record your voice. Of course, your video will not be called as such without a camera, for this is the main material to undergo video lesson. As you develop your video, you may use high-resolution webcam, digital camera, or DSLR. However, not all of us can afford these professional cameras. Most smartphones are already equipped with specifications for video recording. You will just set up your phone's camera settings to high definition or best video resolution. In creating video lesson, you will use a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentations hold attention of different types of audiences like our students through the imaginative use of graphics, music, and video. 
Since students nowadays are very technologically advanced, educational tools that comprise of technology like PowerPoint enhance student interaction and involvement in our video lesson. Later, I will give some tips on how to make your PowerPoint presentation more effective for our students, so keep watching. The content preparation for a good video lesson involves an extensive pre-production stage in which you plan everything that you want to show in that video. A script or lesson plan completes the material needed for the creation of a video lesson. It is the most important material because it will be your guide for the flow of your video. With this, you can avoid forgetting your lines and avoid any mistakes in speaking. Now, let's talk about the tips for effective PowerPoint presentations. For fonts, select a single sans serif font such as Arial or Helvetica. Avoid serif fonts such as Times New Roman or Palatino because these fonts are sometimes more difficult to read. Use no font size smaller than 24 points. Use the same font for all your titles. Select a font for body copy and another for titles. Use bold and different sizes of those fonts for captions and subheadings. Don't use more than 4 fonts in a slide. Use larger fonts to indicate importance. Use different colors, sizes, and styles for impact. Avoid italicized fonts as these are difficult to read quickly. Avoid long sentences. Avoid abbreviations and acronyms. Limit punctuation marks. No more than 6 to 8 words per line. Use dark text on light background or light text on dark background. However, dark backgrounds sometimes make it difficult for some people to read the text. Do not use all caps except for titles. And lastly, to test the font, stand 6 feet from the monitor and see if you can read this slide. For design and graphical images, use design templates, standardize position, colors, and styles. Include only necessary information. Limit the information to essentials. Content should be self-evident. Use colors that contrast and complement. Too many slides can lose your audience. Keep the background consistent and subtle. Limit the number of transitions used. It is often better to use only one so the audience knows what to expect. Use a single style for dingbats for bullets throughout the page. Use one or two large images rather than several small images. Prioritize images instead of a barrage of images for competing attention. Make images all the same size. Use the same border. Arrange images vertically or horizontally. Use only enough text when using charts or graphical images to explain the chart or graph and clearly label the image. Keep the design clean and uncluttered. Leave empty space around the text and graphical images. Use quality clip art and use it sparingly. A graphical image should relate to and enhance the topic of this slide. Try to use the same style graphical image throughout the presentation. Make a single image stand out with dramatic contrast. Choose color to make a dramatic change to a single copy of your clip art. Check all images on a projection screen before the actual presentation. And lastly, avoid flashy images and noisy animation effects unless it relates directly to this slide. For the color, limit the number of colors on a single screen. 
Bright colors make small objects and thin lines stand out. Use no more than 4 colors on one chart. Check all colors on a projection screen before the actual presentation. Colors may project differently than what appears on the monitor. As the general tip for the presentation, plan carefully, do your research, know your audience, time your presentation, speak comfortably and clearly, check the spelling and grammar, do not read the presentation, practice the presentation so you can speak from bullet points. The text should be a cue for the presenter rather than a message for the viewer. Give a brief overview at the start, then present the information. Finally, review important points. It is often more effective to have bulleted points appear one at a time so the audience listens to the presenter rather than reading the screen. With all the knowledge and ideas that I have shared with you, you are now ready to create a fun and engaging video lesson. I am Sir Mark Joseph Bibiloria of San Jacinto National High School. Thank you for listening and watching. God bless you all. Our next speaker is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Fishery Education of Pangasinan State University in Binmale and took her elementary education units at Metro Dagupan Colleges. She just finished her final defense for her dissertation in Doctor of Philosophy at Colegio de Dagupan. She formerly served as a 12-year elementary teacher and now the Senior High School Assistant Principal 2 of San Jacinto National High School. Please welcome! Madam Josefa P. Solomon. A pleasant day to everyone. This is Josefa P. Solomon of San Jacinto National High School, your discussant on the technical structure of a video lesson. Since we are still experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic and face-to-face -face classes are not allowed, the Department of Education offers a wide array of learning modalities, from modular distance learning print to online learning and the extensive production of video lessons. Video lessons increase student engagement, which in turn helps boost achievement. If students are interested in the material, they will process and remember it better. They offer the flexibility to pause rewind, or skip throughout the video to have class discussions or review particular areas. Dear teachers, are you ready now to take your part in making video lessons? Before starting filming your video lesson, you must plan the things that you are going to do. You must also write your script after planning. Then, if you indulge yourself in hours and hours of making a video lesson, then you must know the technical structure of a video lesson first. And here is the structure of a video lesson. You have introduction, the milk or the most essential learning competencies, objectives, motivation, review, presentation of the lesson, then you have discussion, activity, appreciation, reflection, generalization, evaluation, assessment, assignment or agreement, closing statement, and references. It is very important for you to master the structure of a video lesson for you to save time, effort, and energy. According to the evaluation tool for video lesson script of Department of Education Regional Office, the length of a video lesson is a minimum of 20 and maximum of 25 minutes and another 10 minutes for the evaluation and assessment. So let's start our discussion with introduction. 
The first part of a video lesson is you have your self-introduction. You need to film yourself while welcoming your learners. You should state your name and the school where you teach. Introduction must be creative and interesting to get the attention of the learners to watch the entire video. You need to set the tone of the entire video, engaging and well-organized. You may state the subject, quarter, and grade level. The next part is the MELC. The most essential learning competencies. In this part, you are going to present the milk. It is okay to film yourself while stating the milk, but make sure that the milk is also shown on the screen. Or you can also do the voiceover while showing the milk of the lesson. Remember, that your learners are individually diverse. Objectives. Your objectives should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. It should have cognitive domain, psychomotor, and affective. Ideally, it should contain all the said domains but it is acceptable that it will only contain two domains that are cognitive and psychomotor motivation and review we use the motivation when you are presenting a new lesson motivation is the time to check the learner's background knowledge on the new lesson while we use review when it is a continuation or a prerequisite of the new lesson. You need to connect to the new lesson, to what the learners already know. Make sure to get learners' interest using start-up or warm-up activities, be it games, puzzles, short exercises, and many others. Preferably, motivation should be three to five minutes. If your activities are interactive, then you must present the activity. You pause for a while after giving the direction because you need to give your students ample time to answer. Then, show the answer. Activities should be parallel to the lesson that you are about to discuss. Presentation of the lesson. It is part of the video lesson where you give instances of the content and competencies. This gives an overview of the lesson. It also shows the importance to our daily lives. Discussion It is considered as the main part of the video lesson because you convey new information to the learners. You help them understand and master that information. After discussing, give examples. Two to three examples will do in each milk. There are times you need to demonstrate the skills. You can do this during discussion. If you are going to demonstrate a specific skill, then you need to film or record yourself. It is recommended for you to do this. Instead of showing some pictures or getting videos from the web. If you cannot perform that specific skill, that is the only time you use videos from the web. Make sure to cite the reference to avoid the copyright infringement. 
activity if you include activities in the motivation or in review part of the video lesson the guidelines are the same in the activity but this time activities must be parallel to the given examples in the discussion this serve as the formative assessment to the learners again make sure that the tasks are interactive and engaging after presenting your activity pause for a while after giving the direction to give time for the students to answer and then show the answer you may set five minutes duration appreciation reflection generalization in this part develop the appreciation and valuing for learners learning by bridging the lesson to daily living also provide a summary of the lesson evaluation assessment measure how much the learners have learned the entire lesson consider the hats higher order thinking skills this can be any form of assessment be it multiple choice essay puzzle and more the performance task is also presented here Provide rubrics for the performance tasks. Assignment agreement. This can be an advanced reading or enrichment activity of the next lesson or topic. You can also provide an enrichment activity for the mastery of the lesson. Closing statement. This part is the time that you give your final words before ending your video lesson. You may reiterate your name so that your learners will remember you as their teacher. References The last part of your video lesson is the list of references where you will cite and give credits to the authors of the books, magazines, or any print materials you use in your video lessons. You may also include the websites that you use in uploading videos or pictures. A friendly reminder, always remember to plan carefully about when to show your face or to do a voiceover in the video lesson. Now that you've learned a lot from this discussion, I am confident that you are fully equipped and ready to develop your own video lesson. Thank you for listening. To talk over about the copyright issues, we have a master teacher one from San Jacinto National High School and one of the 2020 outstanding teaching personnel in schools division of Pangasinan II a division winning coach of Cinelexic, a short filmmaking contest. Teachers and Employees Association President of San Jacinto National High School. He is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Education, major in Information Technology at Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University. He finished his Master's of Arts in Education, major in Computer Education, and is now currently taking up his Doctor of Education, major in Educational Management at Pangasinan State University, Ordeneta. Let's all welcome our next speaker, Sir Roger Z. Estabilio. Good morning, dear participants. I am tasked to discuss to you the vital concepts of Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, or the Republic Act 8293. But we will focus our discussion on the copyright the validity of each literary and artistic works, and the fair use. Republic Act No. 8293, an act prescribing the Intellectual Property Code and establishing the Intellectual Property Office, providing for its powers and functions, and the other purposes. 
Let's now proceed to the definition of intellectual property. Intellectual property refers to the creation of mind such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs, symbols, names, and images used in commerce. Intellectual property is protected in law by, for example, patents, copyright, and trademark, which enable people to earn recognition or financial benefit from what they invent or create. By striking the right balance between the interests of innovators and the wider public interest, the IP system aims to foster an environment in which creativity and innovation can flourish. The World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO, is the global forum for intellectual property services, policy, and information and cooperation. The World Intellectual Property Organization, or WIPO, is the UN agency responsible for treaties involving copyright, patent, and trademark laws. WIPO can be forced for progressive change, helping the world to take into account public interests and development needs. There are different types of intellectual property. We have copyright, patent, trademark, industrial design, and geographical origin. Copyright is a legal term used to describe the rights that creators have over their literary and artistic works. Works covered by copyright range from books, music, paintings, sculpture, and films, computer programs, databases, advertisements, maps, and technical drawings. Let's now proceed to the law on copyright. Literary and artistic works, herein after referred to as works, are original intellectual creations in the literary and artistic domain protected from the moment of their creation and shall be included in particular. Books, pamphlets, articles, and other writings, periodicals, and newspapers. Lectures, sermons, addresses, dissertations prepared for oral delivery, whether or not reduced in writing or other material form. Letters, dramatic or grammatical musical compositions, choreographic works or entertainment and dump shows. Musical compositions with or without works. Works of drawing, painting, architecture, sculpture, engraving, lithography, or other works of art, model or designs for works of art, original ornamental designs or models for articles and manufacture, whether or not registrable as an industrial design and other works of applied art, illustrations, maps, plans, sketches, charts, and three-dimensional works relative to geography, topography, architecture, or science. Drawings are plastic works of a scientific or technical character. Photographic works including works produced by a process analogous to photography and lantern slides. Audiovisual works and cinematographic works and works produced by a process analogous to cinematography or any process for making audiovisual recordings. Pictorial illustrations and advertisements. Computer programs and other literary, scholarly, scientific, and artistic works. Works are protected by the sole fact of their creation, irrespective of their mode or form of expression, as well as of their content, quality, and purpose. Let's now proceed to the derivative works. The following derivative works shall also be protected by copyright. Grammatizations, translations, adaptations, abridgments, arrangements, and other alterations of literary or artistic works. Collection of literary, scholar or artistic works, and compilations of data and other materials which are original by reason of the selection or coordination or arrangement of their contents. Let's now proceed to the validity period of copyright. For literary works, during the lifetime of the author plus 50 years after death. For art, 25 years from the date of creation. For photographic work, 50 years from publication. For audiovisual work, 50 years from publication. 
Let's now proceed to the sound recording. 50 years from year recording took place. For broadcast recording, 20 years from the date of broadcast. For the trademark, valid for 10 years and may be renewed for a period of 10 years. For the invention patent, valid for 20 years from filing date application. And let's now proceed to the fair use. Fair use means you can use copyrighted material without a license only for a certain purposes. These include commentary, criticism, reporting, research, and teaching. And the guidelines for fair use, a majority of the content you create must be your own. To return to the example above, it's probably fair use to include a few relevant photos to support your ideas in a blog post, presentation, or research paper. However, using these photos in a project with only few lines of commentary might not be fair use. As another example, let's imagine you found a useful tutorial you wanted to feature on your blog. Including one tip from the tutorial would be fair use. Simply republishing the entire tutorial would not be fair use. You link to the original source. Give credit to the copyright holder. In order for something to be fair use, you must give full credit to the person who created it. This includes the creator's name, as well as the other information that will help people to find the original work or source. For example, if you adopt a recipe that was originally published on a cooking website, you should include a link to the original page. For more help citing your sources, review avoiding plagiarism. Don't make money of the copyrighted work. In general, it's easier to claim fair use when you're using the copyrighted material for non-commercial purposes. While posting images of your favorite TV shows and adding funny captions and commentary might be considered fair use. Selling these images on t-shirts would not. And that ends my discussion on Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines or the Republic Act 8293 focus on the copyright, the validity of each literary works, and fair use. Thank you for listening. Keep safe and God bless.